So I had this my whole life. I mean, I don't know if people believe in God or what. I don't care what you believe in. There's been this unrelenting voice in my head. We all have this voice. It's the right or wrong voice. And a lot of times that voice guides us into comfort. And my voice guided me to comfort a lot. But I had this other voice I heard my whole life saying, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? No, nah, man, we got to go over here. We got to go over here to, to that rock pile over in the fucking corner where nobody's at. That's, that's where victory's at. We're over there in that corner. So this voice was giving me all these answers. Now, I wasn't a real smart kid growing up, but I had this crazy voice in my head saying, over there is where the fucking answers are. And I wouldn't listen to it because over there was pain. Over there was me looking in the mirror. Over there was me being accountable for all these things that went through my life. Even though people put them on me, it's now mine to own. And I didn't want to go over there by myself, but I had to. And this voice was guiding me there. I, it's God, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's what that's what it was in me. I was a character. I was trying to find myself through a character. I was making different hairstyles and sagging my pants, and I was off. I was off, man. I was, I was a clown. I was a clown, and, and and I was like, this is not, this is not what you're supposed to be in life, man. And it's ugly when you look in that dirty mirror, and you're trying to do a new hairstyle to go to school. You know, I had a hairstyle one time where I shaved the top of my head. You know how old men had the hair like leaving their head? So I went to school with hair on the side of my head and in my back, and I shaved the, the whole top of my head. I wanted to, I don't remember what they said, but it was, I was just a funny dude. I, so that was my thing. I was the funny dude that came into school, like Criss Cross came out when I was in high school. So my pants were backwards. I said, you know what, pants backwards, sag down past my ass crack, shirt turned backwards with a toothbrush in my mouth with the reverse part. The reverse part is your head is shaved, and you have some hair on top. Just a little piece of hair versus like a like a part of hair. The part was on a bald head. So it was just, it, I, 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 I would sit at home, instead of studying, I would think about what can I do to impress the motherfucker at school? Wow. Became my life. And that is, it's a, it's a long road to hold to get to the guy who says now, you don't ever smile on any podcast, it looks so serious. I look at that shit, I'm like, you motherfuckers have no idea who I am, who, who, where I've come from to get here today. So imagine them getting your hands and feet, tying your ass up and throwing in the fucking water and say swim. Ah, it was like throwing a cat in the water with fucking a brick on them. So it's so many things I had to get over, you know, and I, and I, and I found humor. I found humor in my suffering. I was like, motherfucker, what are you doing out here, God? And it's like, this is crazy. Like, you're, you're literally trying to reinvent the wheel, but I was trying to reinvent my mind. I was trying to reinvent my mind. And I used every single tactic possible to do that. I didn't want to live, you know, live in this world where I was a fake human being anymore. And I was tired of blaming everybody for where I was at. My dad beat me, this happened. I mean, my dad ran prostitutes, man. My dad literally snatched the soul out of my mom. Like, my mom is still battling. Like, after my mom left my dad, and this is what I'll talk about in the book, she got married three times for a total of six months. You know, I, and I don't go there, and I, I'm not even gonna talk about the guy she married. So this woman, was, she, she's beautiful, she's, she's so smart, all this stuff, man. This guy literally stripped her soul away. And I, and I was a young kid watching it. And I had no soul to begin with. And my, and my brother, he has a story that, that he could write eight books. You know, my, my dad just came through and just washed us all clean. So I saw my dad through an eight-year-old's eyes. So, so we left when I was eight. And then at 22, I went back to see him through a grown man's eyes. And he was the same person I remembered. But I had to, you can't live with hate. You cannot move forward. As much as that guy tried to ruin all of our lives, that's where I came from. I had to, I had to figure out the origin of where I started from. So when I was going back through my life trying to fix who I am, the fucked up person I was, like, if your knee hurts, it's usually not your fucking knee that's hurting. There's something else, man. They're like, it could be a tight quad. It could be the right leg. If it's the left leg, you got to find out the origin of where all this shit began. And I, it, it was him. So I had to go back to where, you know, my, my roots and, and the origin of all this happened. And it's hard to do that. Well, um, I mean, first of all, that is not a true statement. And in, in, in war, the enemy is not always clear. Not at all. The enemy, the enemy can be hard to identify. Very hard to identify. The enemy is going to use camouflage to conceal themselves. They're going to use deception to, to distract your attention. 
they're gonna blend in with the friendly civilian populace and they're gonna take advantage of your benevolence, right? In fact, the enemy is going to do absolutely everything in its power to obscure their position, to hide their purpose, to even mask their identity. So it is not easy to identify the enemy in combat, in war. So what you have to do is you have to control what you can control, right? You gotta be prepared, you've gotta train, you've gotta study, you've gotta rehearse, you've gotta remain vigilant. You've got to maintain discipline in everything you do so that when the enemy does reveal itself, you have the ability to outthink it, to outmaneuver, to outfight the enemy. And it's actually the same thing in business, right? The enemy can be hard to identify. Your competitors aren't broadcasting their next move. You don't know what the market's gonna do. You can't be certain about the next trend or the next downturn or the next bubble that's gonna burst. You can't know those things. So you have to do the same thing. You have to control what you can control, which is you. You Gotta gather intelligence. You gotta analyze the metrics that you can track. You gotta train yourself and your team to be prepared for both the known and also be prepared for the unknown. Figure out what the likely contingencies are and have some plans to execute if those contingencies occur. Maintain discipline as an organization so that you have the flexibility and the responsiveness to maneuver effectively and efficiently when the unpredictable actually happens. So instead of suffering and falling apart in the chaos, you can take advantage of it and win. And that's business and life is the same. The enemy is not always clear in life. It can be hard to tell who's gonna try and bring you down or what is going to bring you down. There's distractions. There are things out there that will do you harm that are so camouflaged you can't see them at all. There are deceitful people. There are accidents that can occur and diseases that take root and there's bad luck and there's Murphy's Law and there's times when it seems that the whole world is against you. The whole world is the enemy. And the same rules apply. Control what you can control you. Train hard, learn, maintain the unmitigated daily discipline in all things. Train hard physically and mentally. Push yourself so hard that you become accustomed to the stress. You get used to it. Every day, make yourself stronger and faster and smarter and better so that when the enemy does finally climb out of the shadows and expose himself to you, you are ready. You are waiting. And you can relish in the opportunity to attack and fight and utterly decimate and destroy him.